real fighting and stage fighting. What's different and what's the same? I've spent more than 50 years studying real fighting of all kinds, with swords in particular. Now, stage combat has never been my main scene, and I, I have great respect for people for whom it is. But I have done a little bit of it. At the American Fencing Academy, where I studied to become a fencing master, part of my training was assisting the fight choreographer in the theater department. My late brother Rick was a talented and experienced actor, and he trained scads of guys for Renaissance Fair stunt shows. He taught me quite a lot. I've choreographed Cyrano once, and Romeo and Juliet a couple of times, Hamlet maybe three or four times, and this is for high school and, and college kids. I've taught a few actors. I've also done some acting myself, took some acting classes, done a little acting on stage, some for films, um, really bad films. I ain't exactly Laurence Olivier, but I have some understanding of the actor's process. So overall, I, I think I'm in a decent position to offer some reasonable observations on the distinctions between real combat and stage combat. Now for the purpose of this discussion, I'm going to lump classical fencing in with real combat, because classical fencing is real combat, but without the lethal intent. We fence as if the blades were sharp. We do take reasonable measures to ensure the physical safety of the fencers, a mask, padded clothing, modified blades. But we still try to simulate an actual duel with the highest possible degree of verisimilitude. So most of what I say about real fighting is also mostly true for classical fencing, but not all of it. The most significant difference is emotional. This is where both stage combat and classical fencing share something that real fighting does not. No matter how realistic a stage fight or a fencing match might be, it is nothing like a real fight. On stage or on the strip, you know the other guy isn't really trying to kill you. In a real fight, you know he is. And that changes everything. Real fighting is dangerous. Stage fighting looks dangerous. But it's actually half dance and half magic trick. In a fight, your purpose is to injure or kill your adversary without getting injured or kill yourself. On stage, your purpose is to protect your partner. In a real fight, your goal is survival. On stage, your goal is to reveal character advance the plot, entertain your audience. In a real fight, you want to hit without getting hit. In a stage fight, you just want to have a hit. Real fights use real weapons, sharp swords, loaded guns. Stage fights never use real weapons, blunt swords, non-firing prop guns, there is absolutely no reason to have a live weapon on the set. If you show up for an acting gig and there is one, walk away, brother. Walk away. In a real fight, you aim at your opponent's center line, face, eyes, throat, heart. In a stage fight, you stay away from your partner's center line. You never aim at the face, eyes, throat, or heart. You use distance and angle to make it seem like that's what you're doing. Abracadabra. In a real fight, you will intentionally use deception, misdirection, and surprise. In a stage fight, you rely on accurate communication. <laughs> the last thing you want is any surprises. In a real fight, the amplitude of your actions will be minimalist, as small as possible, simple, subtle. On stage, 
Your actions have to be large enough to be seen and understood even by the people in the cheap seats. So it's exaggerated, flashy, more complex. All the better to entertain you with, my dear. In a real fight, you want to end it as quickly as possible. The longer it goes on, the better your chances of getting hurt. On stage, the fight occurs over a more extended period of time. It will begin, develop gradually, and come to a climax. This uh, stretching of time enables you to reveal character, advance the plot, to build emotional tension and relief in the audience. In stage combat, you never get as much rehearsal time as you'd like to have. In a real fight, you don't get any rehearsal time. After a stage fight, the hero says something witty and gets the girl. The actor gets applause, a good review, opportunities for more and better gigs. After a real fight, the survivor vomits and has nightmares and swears to God and the devil that he'll never do anything that fucking stupid ever again. Real fighting and stage fighting do have some things in common. Whether you're a fighter or an actor, you still train for balance, line, focus, and distance, but you use them differently with different intentions. Balance. It's very important to be in control of your own movement. To be or not to be, where you want to be and when you want to be there. In a fight, it's to avoid getting hit on stage is to avoid accidents. A line, in real fighting, to remain covered. On stage, to direct the eye of the audience. Focus, you must be externally focused to read your opponent's actions before they happen. In a fight, so you can attack on the preparation. On stage, to stay in sync with your partner and avoid accidents. Distance, the manipulation of interval and angle. In a fight, to avoid being hit. Or on stage, to avoid hitting your partner. There's also the matter of technical skill. Whether you're a fighter or an actor, you have to be able to control the weapon to make it do exactly what you want it to do, exactly when you want to do it. Here's another similarity. This one is true, especially true for teachers and choreographers. You have to match your actions to your actors. There's no point in dreaming up some spectacular stunt that your actors can't do, and I mean can't do safely. And spectacular stunts aren't necessarily better than simple things. Despite what many fight arrangers sometimes seem to think, I would submit to you that the success of your stunt is all in how the actor plays it. If they sell it just right, very simple things can be dramatically effective. This is exactly the same in a real fight. It isn't the spectacular acrobatic move requiring creative genius and feline agility that carries the day. It's the simple action done at the right moment and done exactly right. Real combat, stage combat. They have some critical differences and they have some similarities. The most important thing is not to conflate them, to know which one you're supposed to be doing at the moment and do it. Now, you might not think that would be a problem, but it happens. When people become emotionally driven, they tend to revert to whatever their default mode is. It's not intentional, it's not a, it's not a conscious decision, it's a reflex, an instinct. Let me tell you a quick side story about that. Now, I've heard this story from maybe half a dozen independent sources, so I think there may be a good chance that it's actually true. Anyway, Aldo Nadi, one of the greatest fencers of all time, also fought a duel, maybe two. 
Now, this time in France, fencers were minor celebrities. And somebody doing a production of Cyrano de Bergerac thought it would be a cute idea to have Nadi come on and do a cameo appearance as Valver. Now, Valver, that's the guy who gets the worst of it in that famous duel in the theater. Now, here's the thing. Mm. Here's the thing. Nadi's relationship with his father, who was also his fencing master, was a little bit, let's say, tense. And on opening night, Dad makes a surprise visit to the theater, and Nadi sees his father sitting in the first row. So, Cyrano has selected his rhymes, composed his ballade, and gives the final punchline and the final thrust, and voilà, je touche, right? Only Nadi parries. Cyrano gives the line again. Nadi parries again. Je touche, parry, je touche, parry. We don't know how long that went on. Finally, some stagehand grabs Nadi, pulls him back off into the wings. Cyrano gives his line, delivers that thrust off stage. Somebody yells like they've been stabbed. And now, on with the show. <laughs> As I'm sure you can imagine, afterwards the star was livid with Nadi. Are you crazy? What are you trying to do? Why'd you do that? Are you trying to ruin me up there? Nadi says, my fencing master was in the audience. I couldn't just let you touch me. As I said, I don't know if that story is true, but if it isn't, it sure ought to be. One final similarity between real fighting and stage fighting. Whether you're a fighter or an actor, if you give your heart to the sword, she'll teach you a few things. <laughs>